The true greats need only one name, Madonna, Cher, Prince, Kramer, Nando. The National League MVP will be announced tomorrow, and right now, Fernando Tatis isn't expected to win, which is a shame, because for me, he's a no-brainer, no-doubter, shot through the heart, most valuable player. He has the tangibles and the intangibles. There used to be a phenomenon called Fernando Mania when Valenzuela captured the imagination of the baseball world with his superstar rookie season of 81. We've morphed from Fernando Mania to just Nando Mania, another Latin superstar in California with an entire generation of baseball players all wanting to be the next Tatis. It's time for digging in. Nando led the National League with 42 home runs, with second in slugging percentage, and third in stolen bases and OPS+. Plus. We have seen few offensive seasons from shortstops like the one that Tatis just produced. First off, he's only the second shortstop ever in the National League to hit more than 40 home runs in a single season. He's also one of five shortstops with a 600 slugging percentage or higher in a single season, joining the exclusive ranks of A-Rod, Nomar, Ernie Banks, and Archie Vaughn. Anytime you're mentioning Archie Vaughn in 2021, a baseball nerd weeps tears of joy. In the last 50 seasons, his 166 OPS plus is tied for the best single season mark by a qualified shortstop with Robin Yount. He's ahead of Trey Turner, Alex Rodriguez, and Cal Ripken Jr. Now, 50 years ago, nobody was talking about this cockamamie OPS plus. How about the numbers we all know, fella? Home runs and stolen bases. Ooh, glad you asked. Tatis is one of the youngest players ever with a 40 home run and 25 stolen base season. And don't sleep on what the base running means even in today's game where thievery isn't as rampant as it once was. According to Fangraph's base running metric, Tatis has a 9.3 BSR. That's no BS. Second best in all of baseball behind only Starling Marte. His prime competition for the league's most valuable player, Bryce Harper and Juan Soto, were way below league average, minus 2.5 and minus 3.3 respectively. That's not even close to Tatis's wheels. And Nando made moves to evade tags that you'd expect out of the matrix. Now, there's no doubt Tatis battled what could have been a calamitous shoulder injury that would have ended his season. And there's little doubt he was compromised, as the Padres even shifted him to the outfield away from shortstop in an attempt to shield him away from too much action and a possible re-injury. But Tatis should be lauded for his perseverance and toughness, not criticized for failing to play 162. In fact, no one in the National League can equal his bang for the buck. In 130 games, Tatis led the NL in offensive war, was second in the league in positional player war, and third in steals and extra base hits. This is a well-rounded player who was successful from start to finish. Bryce Harper wasn't even an all-star in the first half of the season. Sometimes Juan Soto just looks to work walks. Tatis has one goal at the plate, to smash the living crap out of the ball. Look at this stat cast data. Top five in hard hit rate, exit feel, barrel rate, and expected slugging percentage. Come on. That's just not fair for a 22-year-old. And to quote Jack Nicholson from A Few Good Men, you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. When the chips are down, who are you going to call? No, not the Ghostbusters, but the slump buster, Tatis. Tatis is trying to be the second ever Padre to win MVP. He is the second most home runs by a Padre in a single season. And he's trying to become the second youngest player to ever win MVP behind only Vita Blue. He could be the first shortstop to win MVP since Jimmy Rollins in 2007. And all of that is wonderful. But here's why Tatis should win. Because it's great for the game. Nobody brings his combination of salad and swag to the table. The bleach blonde locks, devil may care smile, bat flips and charisma which pop off the screen. The stutter step as you round into third on home runs. Mercy me, how about the dance moves and celebrations with teammates proving that his hips don't lie. Tatis is single-handedly making baseball as cool as it's ever been. Partly because of all of that, but also moments like these. May 29th, an Astro lets a ball drop, allowing Tatis another chance, and he does this. And a 1-1 to Fernando. Fernando hits one in the air down the left field line and is headed towards the pole. It is headed onto the tracks. It's a three-run home run. History in Houston for Fernando Tatis Jr. Unbelievable. Crushing a game-tying three-run home run and admired his handiwork for what felt like a minute. Those are the minutes, the moments that have tongues wagging and also hitting home runs out of Dodger Stadium. Are you kidding me? And 0 for 2 in tonight's game. High drive sent to deep left field. That ball is crushed to the back of the pavilion oh. and on top of the pavilion. Wow. An absolute blast to left field for Nando. His 42nd of the year. It's a two run shot. I have never seen a ball hit that far at Dodger Stadium. 
four hundred and sixty seven feet away. Four hundred and sixty seven feet like the Maltese Falcon. It's the stuff that dreams are made of. This Padres superstar is the only player I can say is my son's favorite player and he's my favorite too. Tatis for MVP. Book it. The defense rests even if the superstar never does.